Mm. Hello, welcome to Country Stitchers. I'm Liz. Hi, I'm Deb. It is the 28th of March, and we had snow flying sideways in our backyard yesterday. <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Man, yeah. it was so windy, and it was spotty snow around the area, and the girls hollered, it's snowing outside, and it was just going sideways across the backfield. <laughs> I took a picture of it. Yeah. I sent it to Kev, and he's now got no snow on the ground out uh, there yeah. for the first time in who knows how long. But oh. Well, our garden is ready. <laughs> it's ready. Matt and Logan got it ready. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We went to a mud sale Saturday and Matt left early in the morning, got a, a load of uh um like some extra soil and then some compost so that we could finish off our beds again, you know, freshen them up every year. So we're at the mud sale and he's probably thinking how much work he has to do when he gets home and we needed all the bedding on the floor part that we're gonna be like walking on, all the wood chips and stuff. Cause it just needs freshened up after a while. And we get home and Logan did it all. Wow. And then he just had to do some of the wood chips and it looks so pretty. Nice. It looks so nice. There you go, so, Logan. I know. So cool. thanks to them, the garden is ready. We have all of our seeds. We have, we don't have some of our starter plants yet, but like our lettuces and mm -hmm. stuff like that, but got it all figured out, ready to go. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very now we nice. just need the warmth. We had a couple days in the last two weeks. All my daffodils popped. Oh, yeah. All my hyacinths are up. Mm -hmm. My tulips are three or four inches up. Mm -hmm. And the lilac bush opened up. Oh. Not, not the flowers, but all the leaves popped oh, okay. on the weekend. Okay. I okay. just, this seems early to me. Does it? It does. I don't usually remember my daffodils being up before Easter. Um, usually the neighbors are, and this year none of the neighbors are up. <laughs> I don't know. I, I have no idea why. Maybe they pulled all theirs last year. I, know. I don't know. But it'll be almost 70 on Thursday, so you don't have long to wait. <laughs> Again, man. Yeah, it's so weird in Pennsylvania. You know, you have winter one day and summer the next. That's, yes. that's spring. Yes. <laughs> so, oh, well, I'm ready. I am too. I'm ready. I'm ready for the warmth. Me too. And mm -hmm. I think Ivan is too. He's, although he likes yeah. to play in the chillier weather because he can go longer, mm -hmm. but he does like going outside and just spending the day yeah, out Yeah, it's so windy, though. Oh, my gosh. That's one thing we have had so much of. Oh, mm -hmm. we got new chickens. <laughs> <we needed>, <laughs> yes, yeah, she did. We needed to add a few more. <laughs> and um, I, it's always a pain when you get new chickens because... They don't play well with each other. Well, I like them, too. I, I know there's a pecking order, but Liz knows I hate when they are not nice to each other. It drives me crazy. So I will actually... Scold them. Um, yes. And then also babysit them and, and, and make sure that they are, are nice to each other. I even had her come over and babysit one time. <laughs> yep. They were out of town and they just got new chickens and I had to come over and make sure everybody's playing nice. <laughs> and they were, they were. Well, it works though. I mean, really after I get them acclimated to each other, cause you know, I make sure we don't have too many, but, um, it does, it does work out to where they're not going to pick on each other, which is nice because there's, it never fails. Whenever you get them, there is somebody that will get picked on. And I hate that. Yeah. Remember Donald? When we yes. had to we had to babysit her for oh. She was the reason I came over that we, weekend. Yeah, uh, we had to get her back in shape. And finally we did, and they let her alone, and then she was part of the crew and it was all good. <laughs> but yeah. every time you get new chickens, it's like a mm. a challenge. Yeah. 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 But oh well. We got that. What else did we do? Anything else? No, it's pretty much a sort of standard week last week yeah. except mud sale time yeah we did get to a really good win. gap was good was it yeah good yeah that's the one i texted you about the dresser um that was a good one so not too much else though getting outside everything ready outside and and i actually got to it. stitch in the last week or so that's always so a that's good thing yep. yes that is always a good thing and we did hear from some people this yes. week yeah comments and emails and yeah why don't you go ahead and all right, and you're going to have me start? I'll I'm going to have you start. Yes. All right. So um, we had some inquiries. People are catching up on floss tube, going back, checking out some old videos. Somebody asked after we mentioned going to Old Colonial in Nashville, they asked about the dolls that we did. Mm, yeah. To the best of our knowledge, um, check with local needle workshops to see if any of them are still in existence. I know I have been in and out of shops in the past where I've seen some. So I know they're still there in places, but that's your best bet. You know, mm -hmm. go, it doesn't have to be local to you, mm -hmm. um, but try your brick and mortar needle workshops. Yeah. 
And um, I did get a, a question from Haley. She had done a pillow um, and it was done on the Graziano fabric, the checks that are 12 squares by 12 square or 12 threads by 12 threads, sorry. Um, and it has a looser weave to it and she's a new stitcher doing some finishing and she asked about how you could prepare the fabric for a pillow, which I thought was an interesting question. Mm -hmm. So I'll share that with everybody. Um, if you haven't done your own pillows before, you can use Pellon. It's a liner, an iron-on lining, and it's in various thicknesses. You can get it at Joann's. Um, and you can just cut a piece big enough to iron on the back of the fabric that you've done. The only thing is just make sure you square it before you do, because whatever you whenever you attach that lining, it's gonna hold that shape. Mm -hmm. So square your fabric a little bit on your towel before you iron on your lining, and then you've got it backed and sawdust won't fall out. Mm -hmm. um, your uh, chopstick or whatever you use to stuff your pillow won't come through as easily. So your purple it, thang. Yeah, your purple thang, <laughs> and, uh, and that helps a lot. So thanks, Haley, for your question about that. Uh, Kim wanted to know where we got the ribbon that we that we held up the um, silk ribbon, mm -hmm. and that was a shop in Tennessee. Um, can you read that blue card right there? Sure, that was Hester's and Hester and Cook. and Cook is the name of that shop. Didn't have to read it; I remembered that one. Mm -hmm. That was a cool place. That Very was cool. a cool place. Oh my gosh, yes. I received an email from Julie who is in England and she was just sharing with us that she's getting back into stitching. Um, she's in England. I think I said that and she's just had some surgery. So she's trying to teach herself to stitch left-handed so that she can keep doing oh, some really? stitching while she goes on. So I just want to encourage you keep up the good work. <laughs> stitching is oh. stitching. Um, I remember when I had my carpal tunnel done, it wasn't but maybe a couple days for me before I could use both hands. But um, I remember playing with my other hand for a day or so and stitching with that. <laughs> um, and I hope your recovery is going well too. Yeah. So thank you for joining us. I did want to ask if anybody who's watching from England, and we have quite a few viewers, there was a woman and I found the, um, the envelope that Elva, I kept it for my scrapbook. Elva Nash is the woman's name that I was a pen pal with um, back around 2006, maybe. Anyway, we, we would exchange mail. And the first thing she sent to me was a catalog and a magazine, or excuse me, a magazine and a calendar that had the popcorn bears. You remember oh, all the popcorn yeah. bears? Well, Elva's the person who enabled me in that uh, regard because I found a note in the back of a magazine, an old magazine from England, talking about clearing out her patterns and wanting to know if anybody wanted any. And she mentioned those and I had seen them in that old magazine, what they were. So that sparked conversation. Well, that year, the Christmas issue had popcorn starting in it and had a calendar with all the bears. The one that you did your... Uh -huh. Yeah. I have a pillow so, down right yep. Yeah. So, so anyway. Cute. Elva, um, mm. I wrote it down when I saw her envelope as I was going through my drawer uh -huh. because I wanted to just say, ask if anybody knew um, this address. It's Chestnut, Waltham Cross, Hertfordshire. So that's the area she lives in. It. I honestly do not know how that address zeroes right. in in England, but if you're there, you would know that. Wouldn't that be cool if she was watching? It would, and, and I didn't know if she was even still stitching. I know her sister lived in the Chicago area, Aww. her sister and brother-in-law. So anyway, if you're watching, hello. That would be so cool. And if anybody's in that area, <laughs> it'd be fun to know too. <laughs> That's neat. Uh, Heidi, she is, I think she's new, and she wanted to know who Hank was <laughs> when we talk about Hank. Hank is my pasture pet. He's our uh, steer. And he was uh, two days old when we got him. He was Logan's very first show animal. And we all fell in love with him and could not say goodbye to him. So he has a home here. <laughs> I remember watching Hank when he was, no, gosh, not much bigger than Ivan mm -hmm. 
following Logan down the path to the barn and Logan was just walking along and <laughs> here he goes, just like a little puppy dog. <laughs> And oh, yeah. he just kept getting bigger. Oh, my gosh. I know. Anytime that anyone stops by and sees him now, they're like, he's huge. Because <laughs> like, he's a Holstein steer, so he's all leg. So all the others out there are Black Angus. They're, like, short and stocky. Yep. And then Hank is, like, you know, towers like, above everyone else. It's like Marmaduke versus, um, what was in my mind for a short, stocky dog? I can't remember. But you know how tall Marmaduke is. And then you take a little lab. Like yeah. a squatty little yeah. lab next yeah. to Marmaduke. Yeah. And he has no idea how big he is. <laughs> and then he thinks he's still like a lap, a lap animal. <laughs> um, Deb, she wanted to know what count fabric I'm doing my montage on. Uh, 40 count. And I think it was called French Vanilla. I didn't. I did a little bit of work on it. But I'm not going to show you that today. I'll wait until our next video. Because... I didn't get tons of stitching done on it. So. That's funny. I didn't realize that was French vanilla. Because I, I have a was. piece I just got of French vanilla not long ago. I like the color a lot. Um, I thought it sweet. was. Maybe I'm remembering something different. No, I, I mean, that's um, makes sense. Yeah, I don't know. Denise, she wanted to know the chairs we're sitting in. Where did they come from? <laughs> um, these are actually from the Pottery Barn, but they were from the clearance because there was something wrong with each of them. So I think normally they were like $200 and I got them for $30 each um, because Matt could just fix the problems on the bottom. They're on wheels and they go up and down. And then I just had them covered with fabric. So she's looking for sewing chairs. Ah. And they swivel and all kinds of stuff. They're in style of so an office play. chair, right? <laughs> they I are. mean, that's they, how I would describe are. them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Um, oh, in our last uh, video, Susan wanted to know the hoops hanging behind me. Where did you get the large hoops? I think the largest one, if you, because I was looking today, that was actually my, my big Morgan hoop. That was the largest one that's hanging there. The other hoops are, you know, some just like regular cheapies from the store. Um, and then I also have some different size Morgan hoops. Hoopla. Hoopla, yes. And, oh, you answered about the doll. Someone else wanted to know um, the cabinet in our last video, that black, actually, it's right there. You sh you saw that in our last video, and you saw like, all the little drawers. Wanted to know where I purchased that. That was a yard sale. So, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Good luck. <There's>, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Can you pull up the picture of mm -hmm. the strawberry for me? Yep. Norma sent me a picture is a little while ago um, and I wanted to show it today because I have some patterns that came in uh, the mail uh, to the shop after I got my Nashville stuff. So that's fun. Now this picture is a combination of what's on the strawberry where is, I probably didn't put that in there. No, um, I, when you said strawberry, I thought there is no strawberry there. <laughs> there was in the did. other picture though. Yeah. In the other picture, there was a strawberry there. Okay. So anyway, this will jog your memory when you see this, that um, stork with the little perch there. There's a strawberry by Erica Michaels, very much like that. It's a sewing strawberry. And I do have a picture of it, but right now you're on my phone where <laughs> the other picture is. So um, just use your imagination, turn that into strawberry. But thank you, Norma. That was- I think that's cute, that little bunny she has in there. Yes, and you'll see that again in a minute because <laughs> I'm going to show you a lifelike size of that one. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, thank you, Norma. Uh, that was fun to see that. And I think I had- Maybe even talked about those and quickly shown that last time you had sent that picture. That was really fun because you said, I'll show you mine. And I like what you did, that frame around there and then setting your stitching stuff on there was know, really cute. I know, that's so cool. <laughs> did you have any any more comments? Um, oh, um, Stitching Scotty, she wanted to know if we rode the riverboat. In, when we were in the Gaylord. Remember that? Remember, yep. uh, we didn't, but we next time. We didn't get time, back around to next it. Next time, yeah. Yeah, that would have been fun. Yeah. Um, part of the reason was because Liz was scooting around on a scooter. And um, I <laughs> guess I guess we'd have 
been able to come back around and get off at the same place we got on. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't probably. have to go one probably. way. Yeah, we'll have but, to make sure we do that again. Yeah, we were so busy looking for the shops and looking for what we were looking for. And Pat and Deb and I were just, <laughs> just kind of meandering around, popped into several people and asked directions. It's a <laughs> big place. It's huge. Yeah. Unbelievable. Um, Eva, she wanted to know if I had a sampler wall. No, the wall where I have a lot of my stitching, it's just a hodgepodge of stitching. You know, it's not... Showcase. I like that word better. Yeah, that's good. It's not just samplers. No, no. I don't. But they are all beautifully framed pieces that you've done. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, Deb, she beautiful. wanted to know more about my montage. Um, number one, <laughs> someone said, where can I get that um, chart? <laughs> so... Liz came up with the word montage because my idea was to have a huge piece of fabric on my floor frame that I could just start stitching on and kind of leave it up and use up some of the uh, patterns, you know, because we all have more patterns than we're ever, ever, ever going to stitch, I'm sure, even if we didn't have to sleep for the rest of our life. <laughs> so I, and, and you know, sometimes you don't have to stitch the entire pattern. Maybe there's just a little bit of it you fell in love with. Yep. Um, so that's kind of my my goal with that. I started with a pattern that is the center, and that is called the Mary Beale Sampler Wreath. Liz and I showed showed that for quite a few weeks in previous videos. Um, that is the center, but then everything that is going on that fabric around that is just going to be whatever I feel like stitching, whatever speaks to me, whatever, whatever. Um, Some of it she designs as she goes too. Yeah. So, and then somebody said, well, when will you be finished? When it's full. <laughs> she runs out of places to put things. Exactly. That's when I'm that. Oop, done. <laughs> and this, this um, is the tail end, or I should say the, this is the start of something that was the tail end earlier when she did the sampler that was done in Gift of Stitching magazine that I had been a uh, subscriber to for a long time. And it was a mystery sampler. And each issue, they had a country and they would present a pattern in the style of that country. And she built her first big piece yeah. that way. That's so true. Because that's how I fell in love with doing it that way. It was just, that was so much fun. It was fun. It was um, fun to watch. <laughs> and so that's true. I just am stitching whatever and on um, using whatever stitches, uh, honestly, whatever I feel like. And then someone said, well, how do I know where, where do you, when you're finished one thing, how do you know where to go next? I just kind of like let it flow. You know, I started in the center and then what I did was I moved from there up to my upper left corner. And then I just started stitching that side. Now I'm going to go across the top just so that I can roll the, the scroll frame down some. But you know, it's, it's, it's fun because it's like a puzzle. You know, you're trying to figure out you know, what fits here, what fits there, what's going to look right. Do I turn it? Do I, I what love, colors do, I want? do I stitch over one? Do I stitch over two? I, that is so much fun. Yeah. So, um, that's pretty much, I'm sorry not to be able to give you more. I'm, There's not, not really rhyme or reason to it. You know, just, uh, well, it's your creation. You are actually designing a sampler for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. True. Okay. And, yeah, and that's... I will say if you want tips on designing a sampler that book i mentioned several times in our videos um the cross stitchers bible mm. jane greenoff actually has a section in there how to design a sampler so oh. she gives tips on if you're looking for more detail on how to combine images where to place them how close to put them what colors to choose how to make sure things are going well so people See, could isn't reference that all it personal though you know what I mean? Yes, but to some people, they don't have your vision with color or they don't have your vision with images. So some of us Cretans need help structuring what we're doing to have it resemble something we might have already seen by somebody who has that talent. So okay. I think that's where that comes in handy. It doesn't tell you always put these colors together or anything like that. It simply says you might want to take into account how the colors flow. You oh. might want to take into account whether you have a large image and do you want to put in some smaller images mm. between the larger images. Okay. It's more of a flow and a high level template oh, okay. that she talks okay. about, but not, not a 
here's how you lay it out, here's how you put it together, oh, sort of. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, someone would like to, Rose Marie, she would like to know where can she find the Judy Dixon Hardanger patterns? Judy Dixon. Mm. I think you showed them when you showed some Hardanger a little while ago. Emily Bishop was one of the ladies I showed. Um, Dixon strikes me as mm. one of the names of the ladies who did the books. Uh, I think I have a book by her. <laughs> she says, Hardanger. they seem to be as scarce as hen's teeth. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking, I was think cute. I know what you're referring to. Um, <laughs> the only thing I can suggest, again, is using Google. You'd be amazed at what is available on Amazon. Mm. If you go to Amazon to the book section and type in the name of either the book that you're looking for or the pattern, it's amazing what comes up. And eBay? I've looked in there the last couple of weeks, a couple of times, just to see what's running around eBay for cross stitch, and I'm I'm pretty surprised that seems to have fallen off some wow. from ten years ago when you I used to go there all eBay. the time. Oh gosh, in the early two thousands, yeah. Oh, I was I really? was on a first name basis with eBay. It's <laughs> like <laughs> so, oh my, and I would get excited. It'd be dinner time. I'd say to Rick, I got this book for three dollars oh, on ebay because that's like you bid it was an auction oh yeah. got you that was okay. back in the day when it was oh, okay you could actually get a deal on ebay <laughs> not so much anymore but yeah everybody opens stores on ebay oh, now okay. almost okay. like etsy but okay yeah <laughs> that's that was funny back when you used to and oh, people gosh. used to be able to find old issues of magazines too mm. pretty easily back there that is the best i love to go to yard sales mm -hmm. and sometimes man you'll come across these big bins and of all these stitching magazines and oh, how much you went for this? Oh, a dollar. Oh my God. <laughs> we ought to do a craft yard sale. Ooh. We? Yeah. Wouldn't that be fun? You mean? You and I. I don't. I'm not. I don't, <laughs> I'm not getting rid of anything. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm thinking about these big bins I have in my basement now. Hmm. Well, you I, could help I will me. come to your okay, yard sale. There you go. You can help. Well, yeah. You can stand on the side of the table with me though. Well, I'll let you know when we're having her yard sale. <laughs> Rick's gonna go you're not selling our yard <laughs> oh man um thank you very much for your comments and your uh, yes. emails now um, there are some emails I wanted to go through too but I don't know what something happened with my email thing and then guess what we actually had our cable and our internet shut off <laughs> <laughs> it's a long story but anyway that was actually pretty cool because I didn't miss it at all. It was really nice. It was and eye I, opening, right? Huh? It was eye opening, right? It was, yeah. And um I I couldn't believe like the kids didn't even complain. Nothing. It was just we played cards in the evening. It was like I really don't care. <laughs> yeah. It was so quiet and those those are some of the really nice days that we had. I had my windows open, my doors open, and so all day long all I heard were like bird songs and my chickens and <laughs> it was nice. Um but anyway, I ended up, my email got all confunct uh, too. So I'm not sure what is all happening. And if I missed your email, I am sorry. Quick but, question. Yes. Can you pull up my picture with my instructions on it? Mm -hmm. And I just want to say a quick um, hello here. Um, first to Connie and say, hi, Connie. We haven't said hello to you in a while and hope everything's going well and i got to get back to your blog mm -hmm. um if you haven't read connie's blog she's known as the spinster stitcher um <laughs> it's great fun she is an incredible writer so you might enjoy taking a look at what she has to say about life in general and her stitching um but i also wanted to say a quick hi um wednesday there were some folks who stopped into the shop and there's a quilt show going on in the area right now. Well, it ended this weekend and it brought a lot of craft people into the area and uh, Tara stopped by. Um, she wasn't here for the quilt show, her and her husband, and I believe his name was Jeffrey. Um, but hello and thank you for stopping by the <laughs> shop. She came in, she, she said, I just need something to work on while I'm here. I need a project. I thought I'd stop in. And so we got to pull out some stuff and I showed her some of my Wait, favorite things. Wait, did she get one project? Mm. or more mm. is that fair to say <laughs> <laughs> she got one project and a few things okay and okay few things. i mean coming into a shop saying i need one yeah yeah 
<laughs> and then Leslie stopped by. Uh, she came in going, I only have one hour to shop. I can't talk. Oh. <laughs> and so it was nice to see her. She came in. I think she said she was from the DuPont, Pennsylvania area. Mm. And then, um, let's see, Angela stopped in. Um, and it was great to see you. And thank you very much. Um, we're going to be sharing some things that Angela shared with us with yes, you today. Thank you, Angela. So we very appreciate sweet. that. And then um, last but not least, I want to say a big thank you to Roberta. Um, I got blessed in the peyote department um, <laughs> with some new beads. So thank you very much, Roberta, for that. Nice. And other than that, I think I want to just say that in doing our subscriber giveaway today um, and in our uh, bundles, uh, it became clear that we have a lot of people who haven't taken care of that privacy setting yet. Um, so if you have subscribed to Country Stitchers, please check your setting on YouTube. They have a video and I'm going to give you a quick description of how to do it, but then I'm going to list these steps in our description box today. So often what happens when I remind people about setting the privacy setting to um, non-private, they email and ask, can you check and see if I'm visible? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't. I have to have a way to get to you, a link or a full name or a channel name or a comment to go out with. So let me tell you how to check sign into your YouTube account, which means you've opened up and you can see your thumbnail up in the upper right-hand corner of YouTube. And once you've signed in, click on that picture, just touch it and it'll open up and you'll see a menu and on it will be that little, I, I think it looks like a flower. It's your settings icon. Looks like a little flower with a hole in the middle. Push on that. And then in the left menu, you will see privacy select privacy and then turn on or off depending on how you want it to read we're hoping you'll turn it to um, your subscriptions are not private but the setting is on off keep all my subscriptions private if it's on we will not see you as a subscriber if it's off we will see you as a subscriber so those mm -hmm. are the settings and we will Put that description, all of those steps in the description box this time so you can refer to it while you're looking at your device. I think that's where people get mm -hmm. tripped up. It's like, oh, what was that other step? And I didn't have my yeah. phone. So yeah. we'll take care of that. And again, thank you for joining us. And please push like and subscribe. Thank you. We so, had a entire stitching day together lately. Um, our yes, friend Carol did. came over to my home one day during the week and we got to stitch together and eat lunch together yep. and it was very nice that was so much fun a feed up fun stitching day it was yes and she brought us each a goodie and i want to show you it's so pretty she finished this for me i love it it's a hands-on design pattern and it's a back. really neat it's finish so i like well it so much i know it's so pretty thank you so much carol Love and it. then she did this on perforated paper My colors. for me. <laughs> I really love it. This is um, Tokens and Trifles, I think, is the, the name of these pieces. And again, it's one of those things that aren't made anymore, but they're still sometimes in shops or in people's stashes, and they're mm -hmm. fun to do. And it's stitched the same on both sides, and it's a, a scissor pocket. It's so cute. <laughs> very lovely. Thank you very much, Carol. <laughs> And it was so much fun getting to spend the day. Oh my gosh, um, I know. Learning about so each nice. other I and know. our stitching preferences. <laughs> that was fun. It was. And, and we... it was a good lunch too. Deb mm. went to Mexico, got chicken salad. I love their chicken salad. We want to say a huge thank you to Amy. It was so nice. Yes. I mean, getting happy mail, it's not something necessary for people to do, but it is so sweet when you think of us. And um, just thank you so much. And it was so cute because Liz and I were just talking about needing new and extra <laughs> project bags. And she sent us bags that she made and that are so pretty in Excuse our me, I'm color spread fabric. Out here. Yeah, our color colors Which one we, we going love. For first? Let's do this to our beachy one. All right. Yeah. And then she put these little ones inside that we can put these our are, threads yeah, in. Yeah, a little it's accessory awesome. pocket. It's and so cute. this is really cool. I said to Deb, look, she double zippers. zippers. 
So you can open from either side. Yeah, very cool. And get yeah. into the good they stuff. They are so cute. Yeah, and these? Aren't they cute? I know. Oh, bike on the back of mine. What's on the back of yours? Super cute. I have a bike. They're cute. <laughs> they are so cute. So thank you. Thank you so much. And the other one, my colors, and she gave you a blue one because yes. you love blue. So that's just so sweet. Thank you. We are sticking projects yeah, in these as soon as the video is over. <laughs> it's funny because so. when Deb showed me these today, I said, oh my gosh, I was looking last night for another project and I thought, why, with all the project bags, why can I not I find know, one? one that's empty. Yep. <laughs> yep then yep. she knows us so well. She also sent you milk chocolate Ooh. and me dark chocolate oh yum yes now where is it mm. oh up in allentown mm -hmm. okay mm. sweet yum 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 thank you so much <laughs> we'll be in that very shortly yes <laughs> hang around yeah. you can join us after <sighs> that is very nice and then we had some other mail Yes. I just real quick want to say we also got our stitch quarterlies from Fat Quarter Shop. Liz and I both did. Yes, we did. That was a stretching just a minute. Yeah. Here we go. I don't want to open it up yet, though, because I'm not sure if they've shown them. But this is the new stitch quarterly. When you if see you, this bag. <laughs> yeah. If you sign up for this, they always send something like a pattern, notions, goodies in a project bag. And it's just a fun, yes. fun thing to be a part of. And it's called Stitch Quarterly because it obviously you'll get you'll get it quarterly. quarterly so very very cute um but we'll be able to open that up and show you next time yes thank you very much i don't want to spoil it um and i want to give you something oh yeah yeah i got you an early easter present Ooh. that i want you to open <laughs> she always finds the coolest wrapping paper. she always does this she opens things so gingerly me i'm like <laughs> All right, there you go. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> How sweet. All right, I'll show you in just a second. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Oh my gosh. So I found this uh, company on Etsy and it's called Wood and Cat. Okay, so I show them now? Yeah. And so I saw this. Oh, that is. I just thought it was so darn cute. And she puts these wooden tags on the front of them. And I asked her if she wouldn't mind personalizing this wooden tag. And she did. And it's so super cute. So it looks like a little project envelope. It has a snap here. Whoop, there. And there's the <laughs> tag. And then inside, I'm going to hold your little the pieces inside. Will fall out. Yeah, yeah, I got one of them there that's going to drop. The other ones are pretty attached. Oh, and she personalized the inside uh -huh. tag too. Yeah. And then it's got a, a pocket. It's got tons of little, little pockets. Ones. Okay. So you can either stick your little threads in there as you're stitching. Or what I thought is because you love to do all your beading. Mm -hmm. These will hold your little beading yeah, containers. They will. Yep. And then there's a pocket over here. There's a pocket all through here. You can there's put zipper pocket snaps on in. This side. Zipper pocket. Um, you can put your pens, your highlighters, scissors, and then she gave you a cute little. It is a bear, cute little um, needle, needle minder. minder. Yep, very cute. Oh, and she made you an orc container. Yes, I saw that. It's Isn't little... that sweet? And there's the little needle minder. But I was minder. very happy and with look at that. the work. I know it's very it's very the cute. Two little hooks that you can add get gadgets. Imagine yeah. me adding a gadget. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Oh, you're welcome. That's adorable. You're welcome. Now I'm thinking of myself and your Easter present is sitting at home. Well, another <laughs> I just, time. I just wanted to show it just in case anybody else that wants to order really any for neat. Easter. But I was very happy with it is very well made. That is. And it's just, it's it's wonderful. So, again, we can, can you link them uh -huh. in this video? Yes. And it's Wooden Cat and it's on Etsy. So, isn't that so pretty? Isn't it cute? Really pretty fabric. At first yeah. when I saw it, I thought, I was very... where did you find the linen? <laughs> at first I, I thought it was a big piece <laughs> but of you're linen. you're right. Yeah. It's pretty, isn't it? Yeah, I was very, nice. very happy with the way it was thank made. You. So, happy Easter. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I don't want that left on Actually, the porch. Actually, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to give that to you because you can link that okay, if you great. don't mind. Thank okay. you, thank you. Perfect. Will do. All, All right. right. So, let me show. I have a couple finishes this week. Um, show off. Had some fun. And <laughs> the first thing I think I'll show, because this has been stitched for a little while. You may remember 
um, maybe two years ago. I did this almost, we were at Salty Yarns. I did the entire thing. Didn't I finish it the weekend we were there? The Probably. stitching portion. Yeah. It was a quick stitch. It's by Jeanette Douglas. It's her pin cushion. She has a seasonal one. So there's four of these, one for each season. And the wooden base, I was just asked about that in an email too. Um, these are provided through Jeanette Douglas's shop. That's where I got mine originally. Um, and I did share with the uh, lady that there are some at Stitches Unlimited. Um, I don't know what colors we have left, but we did have some there. So that was the spring. This is the summer posy, which is the one I just finished and I'll show you. And then it turned out that the packet of pins I had, the first three matched the picture and there were five in the packet and didn't the other two oh, turn cute. out to be the two she used on the <laughs> summer one. So I was like, okay, now I can't wait to see what fall looks like, but she doesn't have any in the fall one. Um, in the model. So I'll have to find some pretty fall ones, but that's the fall pattern. And that's the color palette. Cute. And then this is, I like that one. I a do lot. too. And look, she's changed up the chenille on this one and made oh, it the pom poms like Lady Dot. by Lady Dot. Yeah. yeah. That's really cute. So that one's a little different. And I actually have both at home. And then that's the color palette on that one. And I like her little pins in that one too. Yes. And these I actually have. Oh, okay. I have the um, little leaves, the holly. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if I have the candy cane anymore, but I did have They're at one cute. point. I may have I may have used it in something. So um, now I will show you the summer one that I finished. And this one is the one that I just did. Oh, it came so out really it cute. Did. And it is a simple finish in that it's one step basically you have a template and you do a gather stitch a really loose running stitch around the outside i use what's called a craft thread um it's a heavier thread it won't tear easily and i use that for my gathering and then i just draw it up onto this cushion it has a little wooden bottom on it and when you draw it up nice and tight then after I have it as tight as I want it and I have this well centered then I trim all the excess mm. off the center but I wait until after it's gathered on the bottom and all you do is mm -hmm. put the screw through the bottom into the base that you've just gathered your fabric around and tighten it down mm -hmm. it's that simple um don't forget to knot your gathering after you're done <laughs> that gets tricky if you don't and then I just used a needle and thread to attach my chenille to both of these. I just took a tuck every about every half inch and went into the linen and back into the chenille all the way around to put that on. I try not to glue things. I just have a thing about liking it clean. So I, I try to do most of mine by hand stitches. Mm -hmm. So that's how I finished those. Very cute. Thank you. That was fun. Mm -hmm. Then... I have had this issue. I'm waiting for the next one. I'm hoping it came out uh, since I was at the shop last week at Stitches Unlimited. It hadn't come in yet. But this was the spring issue of 2019. And this is what I just finished. I'll show you a bigger picture. You'd think after being in it as many times as I have been, I would know where that is. But this is the piece that I stitched. I think I showed the stitching last video. And then I, this is so cute. I had this frame from oh. Primitives. Thank you. <laughs> My fingers are sliding <laughs> off behind me. From um, Teresa Miller's um, Primitive Treasures. Mm -hmm. um, and I bought this when we were in Harrisburg at, was it Harrisburg? No. No. When we were at um, the mountain yeah. uh, ski resort. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we visited up there, visited some friends who were there for a retreat, and I picked this up in the vendor mall. So mm -hmm. there is my finish. And this Super was cute. this was easy. I did it. Um, the all you did was uh, familiar. Method. Yeah, <laughs> all you do is just line it and turn it inside out, and it's done. Very um, cute. This fabric was a piece of Deb's and like curtains. Yeah, curtains. Yeah. Uh, she had remnants from things that. Um, 
her uh, mm -hmm. dad's wife had done for the house and Raj had done curtains in that fabric and she had a remnant from that. And so that looks great. that's what's on the back. Yeah. Now I can go home and put it up. It's been in yeah. my go do a video case <laughs> since I finished it. Now I can go set it out for the holiday. Very pretty. And the last thing I had was a scissor fob uh, Liz style. <laughs> it's actually one of Fern Ridge's um, scissor fobs called The Gathering. I really like this. I do too. It's one of my favorites. Love those colors. And this is... Oh, you got black scissors too. Yeah, I had those Ooh. kicking around. They're oh, actually for a kit. So that's the original. Oh my gosh, that turned out gorgeous. Yeah, that one was fun. Now that one, I think I showed this a while back when I finished it. But this is the other version that I just wow, did that has gorgeous. a different different center bead and um, wow. a little different champagne bead at the bottom. Oh, beautiful. Isn't that interesting how it changes yeah. the look of the fob? That is so cool. And that one yeah. is yours. <gasps> is it really? Yes. Oh, thank you. You're oh, welcome. I love, when you, I love when you make these. Oh, I my love gosh, it when I have time so off pretty. and can make them. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, these are really fun. Yeah, I have so many I owe you now, right? I, I was yeah. Looking, I was looking at my um, fob um, holder. And I'm going, I haven't done that one yet for Dad. Oh, I haven't done that one. So, so cute. Yeah, I, I had one of those evenings where I wanted to, to work on something, but I was too tired to really do anything small. And I thought, I'm just going to bead tonight. So <laughs> there you go. Hopefully I'll have a few more of those. Yeah, yeah. Let's look forward to those. <laughs> <laughs> so I think next we want to spring into the season here a little bit. We oh, brought, good one. Good one. We, we brought some... Uh, <laughs> Some pieces that you may have seen if you watched all of our older spring videos. Mm -hmm. um, you want to start? Uh, sure. I have two. Um, picked out two of my favorites. I, I don't usually do one. a lot of spring decor, but I, I love this little pillow. This was Brenda driven? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I don't remember what it was called. Do you? <laughs> it's something really simple like something chick, like spring chick or... It's Let, very let's basic. Let's go with that. Mm -hmm. um, but exactly. this was so much fun. The thing that got my attention was the yeah. bunny pop. Yeah. I just think that's adorable. <laughs> so cute. I did change colors. Um, I stitched the grass with a bunch of different like straight stitches down there in a couple different colors. Then I attached the fabric to uh, just a, another fabric, the stitching fabric to another fabric to make the pillow um, that is also the same on the back. And we like to do how i think it was kathy hoberman that showed us when you're stitching a pillow stitch the entire way around and then just leave an opening in the back of the pillow and then cover it with something pretty and yeah you actually stitch the whole way around then you cut the opening in the back yeah and that's Sorry, the I part that that's wrong. hard because you're you're about ready to cut into the middle of the back of your pillow <laughs> but it's just awesome so then i made the back pretty with uh that's just a piece of felt and then i trimmed it um with the same little piece that goes across here this is twill tape down here that I just finger pleated and sewed onto the pillow. So that is my pillow finish. We learned that on the Winter Woods pillow that was a joint class with Kathy Beth Seal. and Beth Seal. The, and Beth did the, the strawberry. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, yep. yeah. That's, that's where that's we learned where we the first, technique. Yep. yep. Because any other time we were still sewing pillows where you'd leave a little bit of an opening like in the... Uh, the bottom or something like that, like right in the seam. And then you'd have to sew your seam together and you'd have to get it pretty perfect. The so this, I love this idea because your seam now is perfect the whole way around and you can make the back pretty and no one ever knew. And there's another <laughs> upside is that when you're stuffing your corners, you are equidistant from yes. all four and you get really nice corners. Whereas if you're at a corner or a side, you're going way across to some of your yes. corners to, to That's stuff them. so true. Yeah, that ever since we learned that, that is the only way I do pillows now. Yep. Love it. Um, and I think also Kathy Haberman, let, um, she might have a video out where she also does this finger pleating. And like I said, that was just easy on the sewing machine just to kind of pleat it as you go. But that turned out so cute. I still mm -hmm. love this Very so nice. much. Um, then do you want to go? We'll just go back and forth. Okay. Or? I only have one more to show, but you gotta right. show these little guys. 
these are my bunnies. I have not finished Francis 1832. Oh. That's bunny number three. <laughs> um, the first one I did was this one, and this was called... Why do I always forget the names? This one's a sample, a sample. hair. This one... Okay. Hmm. Poppies? Something? Yeah. Anyway, um, it's by Lottie Daw. She has three... One of them is called the sampler hair, and that happens to be this one right here. This one I did second, even though this was the first one she released. And then I did this one first. I bought this when we were on a retreat at Salty Yarns, and I had a good amount of this done by the time mm -hmm. we were there for the weekend. Mm -hmm. It went really, really quickly, and it's adorable. Mm -hmm. And the only difference from the direction she gave about how to finish it, um, well, I did two things a little differently they show you putting the outline of the bunny right at the seam when you put it together I like the fact that I wanted to see the outline of the bunny as I looked at it yeah I like that I didn't want it to be the the finish making mm -hmm. it the outline so I added some space between the outline of the actual stitching and then the the backing that I put on it I I separated all the strands. Um, I used a piece of linen from my bunny and I stranded it. And then I sewed that into the uh, seam for the tails on these guys. It's not floss. It's actually linen strands. Cute. And then the bottom, um, I just, I did use glue on this. I glued the fabric to the chipboard and then I just used my, needle and thread and I hand stitched the base into the bottom and it came out really nicely. Mm -hmm. It sits nice and flat. And I did that same finish to both of them. Um, and then <laughs> what? I forgot my I bunny's nose. Say. I, I was going to tell you, I love the nose on this one, but then I was like, I just realized oh, I forgot to add the nose. I waited to add the nose till it was seen. Oh, and poor bunny can't smell. I stitched it right through uh, both That's sides. So cute. Yeah, I like that. That's and cute. And so this bunny needs a nose put on. So I won't put my bunny's nose on. I have to remember that so poor Francis doesn't get born That's without so a nose. That's so cute. So that was the other thing I added oh after gosh. the fact was the nose. At least on one. So that's cute oh my gosh <laughs> so those were fun <laughs> um the next one i brought out is oh, my um, yes. cross-eyed cricket uh pattern called fresh eggs and this one if you want to see or hear about any of the finishing or the colors i used or anything like that uh go to video 20 and then you'll be able to hear all about that it is on a piece of barn board that i dry brushed and then also um actually put on chicken wire on top of the board um, so this was a lot of fun. The stitching's great too. Oh, thank you. This was, this was a lot of fun. I really loved doing this This one. was her first block of chickens. Yes, that's right. Yes. I, they are all after my chickens. Yep. 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 That was Donald right there. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> with all his feathers <laughs> prior to being abused. Now, oh, this gosh. next one I'm going to show you has been sitting in my house waiting for me to decide what to do with it. Um, and so you're going to see it mounted or just sort of stuck onto a piece of um, chipboard. It's a Vicki Hastings cross-eyed cricket pattern. I loved it. It's called Carrot Cake. And I had in my mind that I wanted to do something more three-dimensional with it, but I still have not quite come to that idea yet. So I'm leaning now towards maybe just framing it. And that way I can enjoy it in the kitchen, which is really what I want to do. I changed it up quite a bit in that in each carrot, I did some different specialty stitches. So on the first carrot, I used some elongated cross stitches on the rows to give it some texture. The second carrot, I put in some eyelet, not eyelet, excuse me, Smyrna stitches um, over multiple threads so it gave it some depth. It's it's actually almost a square road stitch is basically a better way to describe these stitches that decorate that carrot. The next carrot I just did with color choices to give that design to it the way it was done on the pattern. 
And the fourth one were the eyelet stitches that I used, the purple eyelets. And the last one was a satin stitch, but it was sort of done like a hopscotch or mosaic, corner to corner in a diagonal, and it gave it texture. So I'll hold that up there. You can see the different stitches there in the carrots. Then in the stand, I changed up the colors and the types of threads. So I used a like a pearl cotton on the, the actual plate portion. And then down here, I used some different stitches to give it a little bit of a texture look to the base. And then this is a another um, place that I used the alternate color from the actual plate of the carrot cake. So you got your carrots and your cake. And I just love it. Mm -hmm. And the little bunnies on it the top. It is so cute. So that's fun. And I just used, uh, I think it was... If memory serves me right, Blue Whisper might be the color of this linen. Um, it's been quite a while since I actually uh, got it. So I couldn't quite, I won't swear by that. And that was hopefully, I mean, I want to get it framed. I want to do something with it. You sitting I, there coming up with ideas? Yes. I know you are. What, 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 what? What are you thinking? Can I do it for you? Sure. You don't care? You give me carte blanche? Don't cut the threads. <laughs> as long as it's all still there when you're done. Yeah, have fun with it. That'll be fun. I'll have a dim finish in my house. Um, okay, so a real quick one. This was just kind of a blast in the past. The, the twins were looking at some of the things that I pulled out when Deb said, let's, let's show some spring stuff. And I had to laugh because this goes way back. Mm -hmm. Um, flashback to the 80s yeah and leisure arts it's like magazines. when we didn't have tv yes <laughs> so those three days these little designs this is when i i literally thought i had just gone to mecca uh with my cross stitch because i had bought that 324 color card that you could buy with all the colors from dmc you got two yards of every color and you had to wrap the bobbins. It came on one piece of cardboard. Wow. So it started with the first number and you had 324 cards on this long piece of cardboard and you had to sit and take each one in numerical order and wrap it. And that's really? the only way you knew what color it was because it was in order. <laughs> oh so I did that with all the threads. Thought it was all that in a bag of chips because I had them all. And these were the patterns I was working on, and they were such a big deal for me then. Oh, that's so cute. And it was on ribband, which was the first time I'd ever seen this. And this is uh, a lot of fun. I still have tons of this because there's not a lot I did with it. I did make some little bell poles with it, but I did a couple of colors of the tulips. And I have a little basket. I just dropped these in and the little <laughs> peeps. And then there's some bunnies. And then another bunny. I actually, I actually did the. No, I didn't. Never mind. I was going to say, are they the same? Nope. Ah. Ah. Guess they are. One looks different, darker, bigger. Mm. Some probably a mistake in the bunnies, but they they look like bunnies, but they're a different shape. They're definitely related. <laughs> they hop, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> anyway, so that's the eggs. They Cute. were fun. But this was another cross-eyed cricket pattern. It was just a tree. I changed it to a pink tree and just stuck a bunch of Easter charms on it. Bunnies and carrots. And I really <laughs> didn't have anything to do with all the carrots. Yeah, I do have an idea about the carrots now, though. Do you? Yeah, those would be cute on a bunny fob, wouldn't they? <gasps> yeah. You might not see them on here for long. <laughs> That's it. She's ripping it apart. <laughs> and then the very last thing I wanted to show you, which actually kind of goes into a discussion about some threads here. This pattern is by Seika, and I had put this on a pillow uh, sham or cover uh, for a small pillow for a chair, and each of these has different threads and different stitches. And Seika Watercolors does all kinds of images. These are the eggs. They do birdhouses. Um, Oh, I'm going to draw a blank now. Mm -hmm. But just about every motif you can think of, they had a pattern like this. Santas, ghosts, Christmas trees. Uh, 50, 60, 70 patterns like that, if I remember the index on the back. And they're fun to do. And they use a thread that's a pearl cotton, but it's called watercolors. And 
It's by Karen. And I wanted to just take a second and show you some different threads. When I ran across that, it reminded me of some ladies who come into the shop for the first time after not stitching for decades, or they've stitched and they don't have a shop and they've just found one and they've come to visit and they had no idea that people stitched with things other than DMC floss. And so it reminded me of that. And I'm also doing another piece that has some threads in it. I'll show you later. But um, these are the watercolors that are used in those Seika patterns. And they're on a watercolor tag by Karen. And this, I, I amassed this selection I have and several more at home uh, because of a project we were doing in the Guild where we were gonna take a blank canvas, map out our county that we lived in or the state. And there was like a little contest going on about how you could use different stitches and color differently among all the members of the guild mm -hmm. to, to map where you've lived. Well, of course mine would have been yeah. wall size. <laughs> so I was gonna do where I was born and then where I currently lived and those two states and all the counties in them. So anyway, I had quite a few colors in my selection for the two pieces, but that's where these Did you ever do in. it? No, I still have the canvas, no. but I moved. That's what happened was I laid it out, was getting ready to start it, and that's when we moved back here. And so I just kind of lost the, okay. the vibe yeah. <laughs> to do it. So I do still have all the threads though, obviously. So that's where that came in. And I'm going to show you one other batch of threads. I'll show you another one um, when I show you another piece. But these are by Rainbow Gallery. And we sell needlework supplies as well as cross-stitch at Stitches Unlimited. And so a lot of these threads get used in both now. Um, there really are no clear-cut boundaries. And you'll hear Deb and I often say, this is about your personal choice and preference. Um, so people use all kinds of different threads. Mm -hmm. These are similar to watercolor by Rainbow Gallery. They're over-dyed and variegated. These are wonderful alternatives to Krynic threads. They're metallic, again, by Rainbow Gallery. These are called Treasure Braid. Um, there's also Nordic Gold, very different colors in Treasure Braid. Uh, Highlights is another one. It's just a little bit different uh, coloration. And then these are a velvet thread. Deb has some of these too because we did some needlepoint kits through Stitches Unlimited and we had a lot of different colors in some of those that we did, the ornaments. And then this is a nylon, um, sort of a, a tube sort of effect, uh, but you stitch with it and it's called flare. So those are in all different colors. And then there's... Fryworks, which is a metallic sort of ribbon, more like a a flat ribbon. I was going to say it's kind of hard to tell. Mm -hmm. There you go. Give you a little depth there of how broad that is. And that would be pretty on some cross stitch too. We've done sort of combination pieces in classes where we've used that as well. So anyway, and then this, you've seen this on some of Deb's finishes. Um, there's Fancy Fur, Fuzzy Stuff, Arctic Rays, and then there's Whisper. All of these are fuzzy, and you can use them for hat trim on Santa, tails on bunnies, um, mm -hmm. snow, just a variety of things you can do. So don't be bashful yeah. and try some different threads yeah, in what you're definitely. doing. It's a lot of fun. It is. A lot of fun. You heard our subscriber tribute bell go off? Yes. So we'd like to say a huge thank you to all of our subscribers. And today we have two subscribers that we'd like to say a specific thank you to. Um, picked up the wrong thing. So Kim Haynes, um, you will be getting the Adam Names the Animals. Oh, and we want to say these are um, a thank you to Amy. She <laughs> had some extra charts yes. that she bought. She and shared with us. Shared them. So uh, Kim Haynes. You'll be getting that pattern from Plum Street. And then Ladybird Stitcher. You'll be getting the Milk and Cream Company. 
I think that's from the door. yeah from Plum Street. And if you can get a hold of me, my email address will be in the um, Dropbox under the video. And last video we had two giveaways. Um, the one keyword was spring, and that goes to Doreen Jupp, I think J U P P, and you'll be getting the set one and two of Spring Parade by Lila Studio, and they are super cute. They are adorable. Oh my gosh, love them. So congratulations. Again, get a hold of me and I'll get that out to you. And then our next giveaway from last time was this gorgeous sampler uh, by Lila Studio. Uh, I had also bought this at market. It is so pretty. And that goes to Nancy Espenshade. So congratulations. Very nice. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some stitching time in both of those. Yes, exactly. Um, and for this video, we would also like to do another bundle. Um, so that is your keyword bundle. If you are interested in this, um, do you want to, this was brought in. Sure. From... This bundle came by way of Angela and we'd like to, we did say mm -hmm. a thank you to Angela for these. Um, they are all Nikki's creation patterns. So if you like a primitive style stitch, I'll give you a look at a few of these. And they're not all just sampler pieces, as you I can know. see. So if you are interested in participating in this bundle giveaway, that's what's in store. Yes. That's going to be a great bundle. All right. Okie dokie. All right. And we did get some stitching time in. <laughs> yes, we did. Take it away. Okay. So I did some more work on my phase three of my little house needlework. Um, well, phase three that I'm building. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I finished grandma's house and now I'm working on the school. That's the school. And this is what I have so far. Oh, I should probably pull this off over here. Let's get the cues. It's getting longer and longer. All right. So started it off with the post office and then the filling station. I didn't get uh, the name up here yet. Then Grandma's house. And I got that completely finished. I wanted Grandma's house to be set in the front of, for this phase three, I want to kind of make it look like uh, things are closer and things are, are further set in the background. So the truck is stitched over one and the snow is nice and sparse and through here, which gives it that look of depth and a tree kind of tucked back in here. And then, um, you know, a larger tree kind of out front here by the, by the front of the house. Um, some snow right here up at the very front and the school I'll be setting back further. Um, but I changed the colors in grandma's house. I was so happy how that turned out. I thought that was really pretty with that porch. Um, so that's what I have so far. And I decided what I'm going to put at the top of the filling station up here on this green sign, Liz, it's supposed to say filling station, but my dad loved to work on vehicles. And I mean, on the weekends, you could find dad in our driveway with one of the cars up on the ramps. I mean, that's just, he loved it. I'm going to put Frank's place. Oh uh, yeah. I wondered if that's what you, when you said your dad, I thought sure that was going to be the same sign. Yes. Awesome. And that's the same sign we have up at our cabin in the mountains too, because my dad always wanted us to have a place. And my brother and I, after he passed away, we got one together up there and we have a huge sign that an Amishman um, burned into the wood and it kind of, it's almost like one of those ones where you can like drive under, mm -hmm. you know, and it says Frank's place. So that's yep. what I'm going to do cool. for that one. Very nice. Thank you. Um, do you want to show one of yours? I can't believe how while? far you're getting. Yes. These go so quickly. All right. And, oh, sorry. That's all um, right. Go this ahead. This is on where I stuck 32 count on. and it is on a fabric called natural. Um, and I have stitched all of the phases on that same, that same fabric. And I'm going to get them framed with the same, uh, kind of frame too. So that'll be cool. If you're still looking, I'll go again. Go. Okay. Then I did some work on my, um, oh, I forgot to bring the, Liz, help me out here again. 
Is this Prairie? That's Prairie Schooler. Prairie Schooler. Okay, mm -hmm. I don't want to say the Alphabet wrong thing. series. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I did some more work on that. This is over one on 32 count and the E is finished except for I have to fill in the tapestry just the colors here but I went ahead and jumped onto letter F <laughs> just because I felt like it so I went ahead and started over here um, this is going to be three across and nine down uh, for all of the letters and the ampersand symbol and this is a lot of fun to do and it doesn't look like much, but that's a lot of stitching. Like, yes, these are, that's a lot of stitching. They're for... almost full coverage. Each <laughs> of those little guys is yes. almost full coverage. And when you're doing it over one, Woo. this tiny little square is a hundred stitches. So yes. there's a lot of stitching yeah. in that. I mean, you look at that and you think, wait, how long did that take me? But mm -hmm. it's a lot of stitching. It is. It's just I was actually thinking of that the other day. Mm because I was remembering some of the older floss tube channels I used to watch about eight years ago. Mm -hmm. And one of them was D stitcher, which is where I first saw right. that design right. uh, done that way. And I was thinking about her. Then I did some more work on my um, all creatures, great and small by Barbara Anna. Again, there's the pattern. This is on 40 count vintage country mocha there you go um so i completely got this side over here finished with the the lady the little milking maid and the teapot and the cup and now i'm on to this side i'm gonna put a letter e in the center there in that circle so that's what i have so far very nice Thank you. Using one or two strands on that? One. one. One strand, yeah. Yeah. Then I decided to pull out one that I haven't touched in a while. And it is the Cornwall Cottage Sampler um, by Rosewood Manor. Liz and I fell in love with this a while ago. It's just so pretty. And there's hardly any colors in it. Yeah. Like what? Five. Five? Mm -hmm. It's so pretty. Oh, gosh. So Make I sure you buy all your skeins at the same time, though, because you <laughs> need multiple skeins of yeah. weeks, and um, and they will be they will be different if you don't get them all simultaneously. Yeah, and what fabric am I doing this on? That's by Fabric Flare. That is um. What was the color? Then? I uh, mm, it's in there what they used um i thought it was what they used but i can't remember it's cream right. oh cream but this is this is not this is fabric flare oh, we they, bought yeah what did we because they called oh, for belfast man i had my hmm. color slip with me stone it's stone is the color name of this mine's not that's not mine though you and i don't is it that's the it back doesn't... you have to go to the oh, front it is, oh. <laughs> fabric flare is stamped on yeah. one side only so she was looking at the back okay and not the front but this so is stone. called stone okay. yes all right yep. and so this is where i am i am i i filled in a bunch more of the basket down here um the other day but it it is so much fun to do and the reason I and mine I, and yes liz brought hers along too because <laughs> this i'm stitching over one with one strand and and I'm preparing mine on 28 count over two. Yes. And it was one of the first ones I decided before I started it because of the design. I love the intricacy of that border mm -hmm. and the center. And there's a lot of white space here. And I thought I am not going to be pulling out my stitching. So I decided to use my easy count basting thread on this project. Now I have more to go but that's 160 stitches there in that basting area 10 per row and 10 up and down i'm not going to go across i i can see that well enough to count every 10 stitches in and out so that's how i'm going to do it and then um if you're not familiar with the easy count guideline that's this product right here it comes on a spool it's basically um like a four pound, two to four pound red fishing line is what you're mm -hmm. stitching with. Um, and it's nylon. And what I do is I go up and down 
and then when I need to, I make sure I tie them all off at the bottom. It just keeps your knots at the bottom and I don't have to worry about it. And when you're done, because it's nylon, you can't split it with your needle. So when you're done stitching, all you do is slide these threads out after you're done with your project. So it's a really nice way mm -hmm. to put a grid on your fabric. Mm -hmm. So that. Yeah, because it was funny when she pulled out her fabric. I'm going, wow, you got a lot of it's fabric. Huge. Yeah, it's huge. <laughs> <laughs> but I forgot you were stitching yours ever too. Yep. Yeah. And and it's on 28 too. So mm -hmm. we're jumping both hoops there. Oh my gosh, look, it's written on the fabric right there, stone. Ta-da. <laughs> Maybe I should read. <laughs> oh, and take the fun out. What would I be able to help you with? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and then the last thing I pulled out, uh, my friend Tina got me back into wanting to do this again, and I've got to get it done. The punch needle. Um, do you mind holding that for a nope. second, Liz? I can show them. Um, this is, it's a big one. It's called the Homestead Sampler, and it is by Brenda Gervais. And it's been in her house for a while. Yeah. Yeah. So this has Valdani thread. I won't do that again. <laughs> um, if you go back. I ran out of a color. And so I needed to get more of this uh, yellowy kind of color, which I did. I got some of that. But punch needle eats your thread so quickly. And there's so many little itty bitty pieces to this sampler that I really don't need to spend the money stitching with Valdani. I really don't. Well, live and learn, right? I did not figure that out in the beginning. So um, this is the side that you actually work from. And what I did was I just held my fabric up to, I taped it to a window in my house and I used um, the fabric pen with a very, very fine tip. And I just drew it on with, you know, um, you put the paper design, the drawing on your window, and then you put your fabric, tape that over top of it and just trace it. And then that gives you your pattern to punch. Um, so I'm gonna finish the inside here with the Valdani, but then all of this outside here, I'm just gonna use DMC. It doesn't really make sense for me to use the Valdani for all those little pieces. Maybe the background, as it goes around, there's a lot of that red background. Maybe I'll do the Valdani for that, but other than that, I'm I'm not gonna. I'm gonna save the Valdani for another stitch, you yeah. know, because it doesn't really make sense for me to to use all that. But I wanted to get back Very inside nice. and get it get it going, because that does go pretty quick once you're. Mm -hmm. you it's know. a nice thing about punch needle, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yep, and so that was it. All right, well, I worked on a couple different things and I forgot I had a couple of questions too. So when I get to that, I will ask my question. Um, this piece came from Nashville. I showed this to you when we got back and I had to start on this right away. It was so much fun. Mm, so cute. And this is called Rabbit and the Rose. Um, And I had it, there it is. I was going to say the original picture of it is in here somewhere. So this is by Brenda Gervais with my needle and thread. Little pillow there. Now, this was stitched on Time Goes By by Seraphim Fabrics. I used a piece of affogato by Fiber on a Whim, and I did mine on that. Is that okay? Uh huh. And um, that's so how cute. far I got on him. Mm -hmm. It's taking shape now. Mm -hmm. it's starting to look like a bunny in a basket. Mm -hmm. And then I moved on to something else that I wanted to start because it looks like it's going to be so much fun oh, to finish. I did start it. I did. This is Quaker Turtles by Ellen Chester. And there's not a lot of stitching. Mm -hmm. They're tiny little guys. Um, the whole piece that, that she grids is five by five for each portion, but the design itself is between one and three inches. So this is oh, what I started cute. with. And this is the, um, pocket, let's see, 
the pocket turtle, which is this one up here on the upper corner. And that's where the scissors slide in. You can put your scissors in that oh. pocket or gadgets or thimbles or whatever. Yeah. And then that's the one I started on there. I don't know. Can, am I got that in front of the... Oh, yes, you okay. do. It looks All awesome. Right. Where's the pocket? The pocket is right under that. That is the top. And then you slide your things in between the stitching. And then there's a piece of weeks. You attach this to another pocket sits on top of the turtle everything that would be... that's how the needle book opens oh that's the needle book okay and okay. then this slides into the pocket one um these are the bottom of them um i wish they had a picture on the front showing something in the pocket but yeah uh, i saw the model so cute you were just talking about how your granddaughter lost a tooth oh yes that could be a tooth fairy turtle it could it could i might have to do something like that i could do it in different colors too it could be like not green it could be like their favorite so color cute. so that that was fun to start and i'm doing that on i oh i should say i changed the colors on both counts originally it was done with juniper by weeks for the thread and then also the fabric was water lily uh it's a zweigart fabric i believe and I decided I wanted it to be done on Cypress. I like it. I do too. I like Cypress it. is by Fiber on a Whim. Mm -hmm. And then I chose Otter Creek. I love Otter Creek. I do too. And so those oh. are the two colors I combined. Yeah, that's so cute. And then I'll probably have a different color wool felt because mm -hmm. I don't think those tones I know, are going to go well. I was just looking up there. Yeah, we got to find something, huh? Yeah. Oh, anyway down the road for that and then this is a project I've been working on and I was trying to describe this to Deb like the last several months I kept saying I can't find my basket mm. and I kept saying it got tucked away somewhere when we were moving craft room to craft room or scaling down what I had on the I forget but I remember putting it in a box or a tote along with a couple other um boxes that you can put finishes in some of which had my work in them I can't find the box and I'm so concerned that it went out the door to Goodwill because we had a lot of things going out the door but I'm hoping not oh but this is called a needlework garden and needle book <laughs> that basket is so pretty and then there's some other smalls that go along with it of which I have this one which is accessory number four which is the ruler pocket it reminds me of that basket there you did for me with the snowman on top. Mm, yeah, yeah, it's sort of similar. Mm -hmm. um, only in this case, the top is all solid wood. There's no oh, basket yeah, weaving to yeah. it. Oh, this that guy. One. Yeah, that's the right. little that's one at the bottom. Of, yeah. That's accessory one, and it's, um, it is exactly that similar to that basket. So anyway, what I wanted to ask is for a little help. First, I'll show you what my stitching looks like. Mm, and this is so much fun. That's pretty. why I'm enjoying it. The, the garden is just an incredible assembly of different stitches all the way around and then this little needle book snaps in with a little snap and stays in place so i started in this corner here and aren't those stitches fun mm -hmm. yeah it's a whole bunch of different types of stitches a lot of satin stitches mm -hmm. eyelets smyrna stitches mm -hmm. um i have not done any Oh, yes, I have. There's some queen stitches. Yes, that's what I was just going to say. I was going to say I hadn't done the queen stitches yet, but you'll see them in there. And they're just really pretty. Actually, I think that's the orientation of it. Um, and it's a lot of fun. So I'm working my way on that. And that goes down in. So here's the question. If you know or have been in a shop where you've seen this basket available, will you let me know? Um the name of the shop because I'd like to track down another basket for this. It kind of put this on the back burner for me because I was getting ready to get out the basket and start looking at how it's going to lay and thinking about it. And then I thought, I can't find my basket and I look for forever. So, hmm. or if you have a lead on any of the other accessories, um, I bought this after I left Illinois and it was at a local shop in Illinois, which is no longer in business so I can't mm. backtrack okay. to look for it then the last piece I was working on 
I really changed up. This is also by Brenda Gervais and it's coffee <laughs> first. I picked this up quite a while ago at Stitches Unlimited. And it's just a cute little pillow and the spoon that hangs from it, I got that as well. But I decided to play with my sulky threads. I've, I've gathered several different colors over the years and I keep telling myself when I do a sampler and I need um, a really dark thread to detail outline and things, I'm gonna to try to remember. Well, I never remember it's there. So I thought this time I'm gonna pull it out. So this is the coffee bean on top of the cup, just starting. And that's done with sulky threads. And I'm gonna do the whole thing in sulky colors. So I have, this is the palette. We like to hold our sulkies in the, what are they called again? This is a floss tray. No, spool, a floss spool holder. I have the name of it at home. Um, we featured this on Gadget Corner not long ago. I will link this in the description box. People use other things um, for this. Uh, I've seen oh, silicone. Oh, too, mm -hmm. for a floss. I've seen some silicone um, ice cube trays that people use that they buy. Um, I like these because there is just a bit of difference between the size and the dimension and I just like the way they fit better. Mm -hmm. So that's the holder. And those threads are my color choices and I'm really enjoying it. I think it's gonna be really pretty when I'm done. Mm -hmm. And I have another set of colors that's the one i showed from nashville that i picked up aren't they pretty spring yeah, colors yeah i have an erica michaels pattern i think i'm going to try those out on but in the general information category i'm going to link the stitchers village um, website in the description box because they have a silky petites to dmc conversion table and it's it's wonderful. I didn't find it before I picked out mine, Aww. but after I did, I looked at it and I was pretty darn dead oh, on. Good. Yeah, so I was really happy about that. Good. Um, but this Stitcher's Village has a conversion for just about everything, and you find them in the building labeled library. Um, so you go out and you sign up on their website and you have access to incredible amounts of information and there's one Thank for you. you. Yes ma'am. I had a I, I finally got my copier to work last night so I got to make a copy for you. Um but you'll see like um is that all the silk sulky colors? Yeah two two columns. Well I wish I knew when I printed it but so far everything that's in this and the ones I pulled from my bin are all on there. Okay. It doesn't mean it's complete. I mean there may be some missing. Gotcha. Thank you. I think they've been adding to their color palette mm -hmm. um with the popularity of using these threads now in embroidery so yeah i think that's been a a winner for them um i wanted to take a quick second though and show you something going back in the day when deb said go look for some spring stuff i <laughs> kind of went overboard the kids were all bed asleep and i thought oh this will be fun and i found this little pattern that i had not pulled out in ages it was by the floss box. It was when PDF files first popped up online. And the title of this was Biscornu 467. <laughs> and she had a mess of them. And I actually just, I downloaded, I don't remember how many, because they were maybe like $2, $3, oh, yeah? just really simple little patterns. But it is so cute. Mm -hmm. And I had not done a Biscornu. And so this was going to be one that I wanted to try. This is going to be your trial? It was, and now it's going to be my finish eventually, <laughs> but I still need to finish the the bunnies and eggs on that side all the way around, and then the bottom of it has just the little tulips and the chicks, yeah, that's cute. so it's not quite as involved, but anyway, mm -hmm. I'm doing this over one on Lugana, and like Deb was saying about the Prairie Schooler one, when you're going over one, it just seems to be lengthy. Mm -hmm. um, but it is so cute. It is cute. Cute, cute. Mm. Now, I'm going to segue real quick to... Let's see, where did I put that? What, what are we looking for? Uh, okay, to some things from Nashville that came that I didn't get to share with you yet because they came in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> I 
and she sliding everywhere. She has so everywhere. many piles, and all the piles I keep did. falling. When I, when I showed up, there were two piles on the table, and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm never going to fit today. <laughs> what am I going to do? All right, so this one was from Thread Milk, and it was her bunny bungalow pattern, and I just thought these little spring pillows yeah. would be cute in my adorable dough bowl for the season so i want to start on one of those i i like that i think i'm going to start with the bunny one in the middle um i just like that the chicks and the eggs is cute too down here at the bottom that one's a cute one <laughs> then um these are actually a revisit uh i did not just get these um but i ran across some scattered seed samplers i bought this set of bunnies oh maybe what two years ago Deb? yeah they are adorable. And they have out a new set this year. <gasps> they? they do. And it's equally as adorable. But I thought I can't in good conscience get those when I haven't started these yet. So. Sure you could. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good conscience part may <laughs> wear down a little bit. <laughs> so we showed you our horn books um, on our last video from Market. But what I didn't have to show you was why I bought this one particularly. Um this is called Kind and True, and it's by Old Colonial by Pam Reed. And I am really looking forward to putting that onto my horn book. I just really like that. So I'm going to do that little guy. Can I see that pattern? Yes, ma'am. And then I had a pattern from Rosewood Manor arrive. This was a model I would not have purchased this to be honest looking oh, at it's beautiful the front cover the model there mm. was exquisite the colors are really pretty um very vibrant and there's some blues um but the white work in the center is gorgeous mm -hmm. and that's the pattern and there's a couple portions of this that i really can see using in my large piece that i'd like to do and i really like it so that's called Past and Present. That is beautiful. That originally was 2010. So it's not wow. new. It was okay. on their door. Right? That was yeah, the one hanging beautiful. on the door when we went in, I think. If I'm not mistaken. Anyway, close to the door. <laughs> Somewhere near there. Then these were, two of these were from Nashville. One of them I actually finally tracked down. Um, it was a strawberry I'd been looking for. This is called chocolate or coffee the strawberry on this is what really mm -hmm. got my attention i just think that strawberry design there it reminds me of another when i finished the blackbird design oh yeah it reminds me a little of another blackbird strawberry i have hanging there so that's one of them from erica michaels this one is called stitch all the things i've kitted this now i have it waiting to that start is super cute isn't it great and i do believe that I might do the pillow before I do the strawberry on this one. I think that'd be so much fun in my craft yeah. room. Yeah. So that's that. I have two colors in here right now. Um, I'm, I need to hit you up to see if you have any putty. We didn't have any Whose putty at color the shop. Is that? Weeks. 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 And then this is the strawberry I've been waiting to get my hands on. Um, Cute. Isn't it? It's a... Another Erica Michaels called Sampler Berry. And we have that model in the shop. And I just think it's adorable. Very cute. Can't wait to work on that yeah. one. And then, Ooh. you haven't seen this one yet. This one came to the shop oh, not long ago. Isn't it gorgeous? The soft. color palette's just beautiful. That'll look really good in someone's bedroom that I know. <laughs> and I that just, so I don't buy a lot of samplers. That, even Isn't that back. pretty? Gosh. Isn't that gorgeous? It's called yeah. Regina Heibel. Wow. Brenda Gervais with my needle and thread. And it, I was in the shop and a customer brought it up to the counter. I think it was Deb and Cliff. Ooh. And I looked at that and I said, oh my word, I have to have that pattern. <laughs> And um, it was it was newly released in Nashville, but the back shows a pillow with one design from the bottom on the back of it. So anyway, that is Very gorgeous. Pretty. How many colors? I haven't even actually looked through this. I had it up on my craft room counter. All DMC. Yeah. Three, six, nine. 
11 a dozen oh, okay yeah yeah Nice. Sweet. Oh, so, so that'll cute. be fun. Oh, before I go on, I want to ask you a question. And and maybe somebody out there can help me with this as well. This original small that I bought by Mandy Dodonna, it's a little stitching kit. I bought this at Salty Yarns multiple retreats ago, right? Remember that? Yeah. It's a, it's a gorgeous it's little beautiful. box. Beautiful. A gorgeous little box when it's done. This was during my I've got to do everything Quaker uh, <laughs> time in life. It's funny. I look back now and I have all these little <laughs> stages of interest. But this will give you an idea of how pretty the uh, the colors are. They're sort of a blue, blue, blue. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Would you call yeah, it that? Yeah, definitely. And then the problem is that... When I looked up the Romy's creation colors, and this is a little mm. piece that goes in it too, um, I looked them up, and they call for black tulip, which I looked online, and it is actually black, hmm. shades of variegated black and gray. And the other color was camouflage, and it's greens. Oh. And there is no black and green that I can make out of that picture. So I pulled these threads, and that was the cream linen we did. But I pulled these threads, which are threads that are used in this tulip basket, which look to me to be similar blues. And these colors include Jaybird and Blue Suede in the blue category. And to me, I mean, there's no doubt in my mind those are blues. So I was looking at this and wondering if I should be using the same color palette. And these are some other blues that I picked out. Uh, blue Heron, Battleship, and King Mackerel along with Jaybird. I like those. Um, so I'm I'm at a loss. Even this 928 I liked as an option for a lighter shade, but we're not exactly little... sure where to go. Oh, the piece. I tucked it away. These colors, Olive Caper, Jaybird, these are the ones that are on the tulip basket. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. The easier one say, would be the bigger one. I didn't think it would fit in there. <laughs> well, there's another little guy in here that has the same colors on it, too. And do you use this piece with this? No. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's what's hanging right there. Okay. So where they get oh, okay. black and white variegated, okay. I don't... I... So if anybody out there has stitched this piece... Because um, I would pick a green, a yeah. blue-green that goes more with this. Exactly. That's what I was struggling with. I mean, when I'm looking at the Romy Creations colors and I'm looking at this, I'm thinking those are not, I don't know. Anyway, well, let me know if anybody's done this piece. Yeah, what but like, like you said, um, maybe when they used those two colors, you know how all the dye lots change yeah. and they can change drastically. It would be a huge change. Think about but, black tulip. I right, mean, but I mean, you know how many, we've had colors where it's like, they are drastically right, different. Right, right. So... Maybe your camouflage doesn't look like this. Well, I mean, I didn't but... buy them yet. I went online and looked oh. at them. And those were the colors that came up. Clearly black, variegated. So I have camouflage. Do you have it? By now? Romy's Creation? Oh, I don't know. I have one called Camouflage. Oh, okay. I think Weeks has a camouflage. Oh, that's probably it. But this that's is probably it. Yeah, these are silks by Romy's, and I don't own any of those. Oh, got it. So you. that's okay. why I was hoping okay. somebody could shed some light okay. on what they used if they did when did i get huh. what's the yeah. date 2015. 2015 so it's not as long ago as i thought but mm -hmm. it does go back see these are pretty they are pretty and those are what's on the tulip basket right and you can see where the gold goes I in can, the border yeah, in here uh -huh. but yep. those blue shades go really well together so i could shift the blues you know what i mean yeah, i could add this isn't a third gonna, one. if you do all those blues that's not going to look as great hanging off of it like, oh, true. Would, that doesn't actually match those. No, I gotcha. would go off of this. Gotcha. Yeah, which is what I had at the shop when I was looking last week. And honestly, I didn't see anything yet. You and I can look at them together sometime. Because mm -hmm. um, I wasn't 
I wasn't seeing anything that I liked with that. Okay. And that's why I thought, well, if it really does come out differently with those other two colors, maybe I ought to think about it. But mm -hmm. so yeah, I liked it. Here, don't Inquiring that. minds want to know. <laughs> there you go. What did you do? <laughs> so that was the one thing I wanted to ask. So finally, on my list of stuff, we picked up um, this book ages ago after taking our class with. Um, Cecile and Rachel mm -hmm. and I was able to get the Weeks Dye Works to do this little guy down here. Did you start him? I'm close. Really close. I did make um, my patterns from the book. But here's the kicker, right? This is what I never had in my own stash and it came with the kits. It was always the freezer paper that you iron on. Uh -huh. So I sent Rick out. We went out the other day and everybody had said, you know, freezer paper is a little pricey. So in my mind, I'm thinking, well, when I can afford to look at freezer paper, <laughs> that was four dollars and seventy nine cents. All this time, I've been thinking it was like incredibly expensive. It's a huge <laughs> roll. It'll be a lifetime of pin cushions or things with wool felt. So I now knight thee <laughs> for your future pin cushions freezer paper thank you um, <laughs> the funny part is i had even kept that little roll from a previous thing thinking i don't know what i'll use that roll for but when i saw it i went oh wait i can wrap freezer oh, paper on it that's funny so um <laughs> so now what you do if you've never done anything with freezer paper this way it was really intriguing to me the first time well you lay your wool felt out and you put the shiny side of the freezer paper down which has the wax then when you iron that pattern on, it adheres very lightly to the wool felt. And then you cut it out and it stays on just like you had pinned your paper sewing pattern to your wool felt. Um, and I love it. Mm -hmm. But this little guy, I even have, I went and looked. Oh, I had the right pins for him. So, cute. so <laughs> he's up next. And those are the pins that they stuck in him. Oh. So I'm all set to go. Yeah, he's so cute. Carrie loves him. Yeah. So I have a feeling we may be making two of those <laughs> little critters. Oh, and I forgot. I made a run to the closet. No, no, I forgot. <laughs> when I went out shopping for some like craft supplies for the girls and I went to the Reuse It craft store up on near Strasburg Pike. Mm -hmm. Have you been there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. They had a ton of DMC. Oh, so wow. there's a package of DMC for oh, you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I just started pulling oh, stains that were colors that nice. looked like we might use. Yeah. And those were in the bin. So there's I picked us each. There's colors in there, too. Yeah, wow. I picked the... I, oh, I had forgotten you. to bring that along last time. So that's been riding around in there. Ooh, they're pretty. Thank you. It's a nice little bouquet. A bouquet? A bouquet mm -hmm. of floss. <laughs> a bouquet. A bouquet. Now, let me think of... <laughs> Where? This video is just going to go on and on and nope, on. Nope, nope. It's coming to a quick close. Gadget oh, Corner. Oh, right? Gadget Corner. Gadget Corner. Yay. Gadget Corner is brought to us by Patty. That's all I'm going to say. Thank Patty. you, Patty. And you get a gadget, too. Oh, I do? Yes, you do. Oh, thanks, Patty. Now, at one point, oh, it's quite some time ago, we did something with a slight, with a tool similar to this. There you go. These are called detailers, as in D-E hyphen T-A-I-L-O-R. <laughs> and they are made to help you tuck your threads. If you ever have a really short thread, you can't get through. Oh my gosh, I needed this the other night. Did you? And you can slide this under your stitching in the back, pick up your thread, and pull it through. Wow, perfect. I have one at home that's uh, in one of my stitching kits, and it's a smaller, like a, it's got a little smaller uh, top on it. But I'll show you just an idea here. You can see the, the instructions. But you slide your detailer under your threads. Then you run your thread through the end of your detailer, and you slide it back. So if you've ever used those floss um they look like a little flossing piece of floss for dental floss but it's out of like a um fishing line and it has a loop at the end 
those are also what I showed as an alternative to the detailer because it's the same concept. And remember those? Cool. They're blue. I gave you a yeah. bunch of them. Okay. Cool. So slide this under your thread in the back. And what that does is for people like me that use your thread right up to your last <laughs> inch and a half. Yeah. And then your needle's You're longer like, than the thread. I can do one more. Yeah, I can do one more. <laughs> And your needle's longer, and you can't get it under to tuck oh, it. Oh, I know. That's where this comes in handy. You run this back through, slip your thread through, and perfect. You've you've nice. anchored your thread. Thank you. So thanks, Patty. <laughs> they are great. Yeah. And uh, they nice. are in your local needle workshops. Oh. You will see them there. And this is by a company called CompuStitch. And I will look them up and make sure that we give you a link to locate some okay. if you're interested. Nice. And they're very small. You can slip them right into your needle. Like if you use a needle tin or something like yeah. that, they're very nice to fit in there um, and easy to keep track of. Cool. And I, I shouldn't say, I was going to say, I think they're magnetic. I do believe these wires. I was just wondering that are magnetic. If I could put it on my needle I minder. I think you can. Okay. Well, we'll try it out. And, and I see. know how we can tell. Uh -huh. um, where did I put? Here it is. Right here. here. I have one too. I was going to say, I've got a needle minder somebody just gave me <laughs> right here. Oh, and that's a wooden one. Now I'm no. not. No. Hmm. Maybe not. You can get it out. Well. I'm going to try because it didn't seem to want to come up through the package, but it could just be really... There it ah, is. There you go. Ta-da. Just didn't like all the plastic Wonderful. in the way. So. Good. Done deal. Good, good. All right. Nice. Well, thank you for joining Woo! us. Thanks for hanging out with us. Don't... Hopefully you got some stitching done. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please do. Be yes, sure to hit you. like. And we will see you back here before long. All right. As always, share, share the, the joy of work. work. Take care. Bye-bye.